Qatar says it's reassessing its role as a mediator between Israel and Hamas more than six months into the war. Qatar has had a key role, along with Egypt and America, in trying to secure a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas and the release of Israeli hostages. But Doha says its efforts were being undermined by politicians seeking to score points. Let's take a listen to Qatar's Prime Minister. Unfortunately, I mean, we have seen that there's been an abuse of this mediation in favour of narrow political interests. This means that the state of Qatar has called for a comprehensive evaluation of this role. We're now at this stage to evaluate mediation and also evaluate how the parties engage in this mediation. Meanwhile, European Union leaders have agreed to tighten sanctions on Iranian producers of drones and missiles in the wake of Tehran's unprecedented attack on Israel on Saturday night. The president of the European Council says it's important to do everything to isolate Iran. Tensions in the region remain high, with Israel's prime minister insisting his country will make its own decisions about how to respond to Iran's drone and missile attack. Israel's Western allies fear striking back against Iran could trigger a broader war. Well, for more on Qatar's role in brokering a truce between Israel and Hamas, I spoke to our Middle East correspondent, Yolan Nell. Qatar has really played a key role along with Egypt, with U.S. involvement as well. Of course, back in November, we did have a week-long uh, truce and hostage release deal. Uh, but since then, it's proved much more difficult uh, to try to get some uh, kind of new deal agreed between uh, the two parties. Qatar is really seen as being an important go-between because it does have significant leverage over Hamas. It hosts in Doha some senior Hamas leaders, as it has done for many years. They live there in exile. And at the same time, Qatar has this very important role um, as an ally of the U.S. in the region. It hosts a large uh, U.S. military base in its desert and often does serve a purpose in these kinds of negotiations. Now, these are strong comments that have been made um, by uh, the, the Prime Minister, who's also the, the Foreign Minister of Qatar, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Athani. And he has really been talking about how there are narrow political interests that are being served here by some of the comments against Qatar. And it, it's clear it, he really does seem to mean um, some things that have been said in recent days in Washington, particularly uh, by one U.S. Democratic congressman who is accusing Qatar of actually uh, blocking a deal uh, to bring home the hostages, um, saying that it's far too close uh, to Hamas and that the U.S. should reevaluate its uh, relationship uh, with this big player in the Gulf. Um, already, Qatar's embassy in Washington have responded to that quite strongly, criticizing those remarks. Yeah, exploited and abused the words that the prime minister has been using. That's right. And this is extremely uh, strong language. And I think it just shows how sensitive these things are uh, for Qatar that does straddle this very difficult role um, in the region. Um, it's a country also because of its proximity to Iran that doesn't like to antagonize Iran. Uh, it doesn't have uh, diplomatic relations, proper diplomatic relations with Israel, but it has often um, acted as a go-between um, when it comes to uh, previous um, ceasefire negotiations with Hamas in Gaza uh, and, and really because of, of just the importance of, of the US to Qatar, this small but very well-off Gulf country, I think it wants to nip in the bud this idea that it is not an honest broker here. It also highlights how things are, in the Qatari's words, at such a delicate phase at the moment when it comes to negotiations on a new deal that could bring home some of the remaining Israeli hostages still held by Hamas in Gaza and at the same time uh, lead to a, a ceasefire there because you have really at the moment this very difficult position where Israel only wants to talk about a pause in fighting. Uh, it doesn't want to talk about ending the war without dismantling Hamas in Gaza. Hamas doesn't want to talk about a pause. It wants a complete end to this war before it will release the hostages it's holding.